Hi folks, it's Min here again with the Royal Flying Doctor Service STAR program, uh, specialised training in aeromedical retrieval. Today's uh, session uh, recording for our YouTube channel is with Dr Dean Taylor again, uh, one of our faculty members of the STAR program. And uh, what we're going to talk about in the next uh, five minutes or so will be uh, a topic uh, related to emergency airway management and pre-hospital rapid sequence intubation. So this is sessions that we uh, are going to teach during our pre-hospital anaesthesia and uh, airway management course uh, on the 4th of February 2012 here in the RFDS Cairns base. And um, Dean is uh, one of the principal instructors on that course. So we, he's going to give us a session during the course called Pre-Hospital RSI. So we're just going to ask him a few things about what to expect. So uh, Dean, uh, thank you for, for, for coming uh, back again and, and uh, talking to us. So just briefly for people who, who haven't heard about your background, can you just go through your background again? Yeah. So I'm trained as a, a procedural GP anaesthetist um, and sort of wandered around Australia doing retrievals and anaesthetics for several years uh, and then joined RFDS in Queensland about 11 years ago and have been working in retrieval medicine since well, for more than 15 years, really, and currently the principal medical officer with RFDS Queensland. All right, great. Now, um, let, let's get to it. So pre-hospital rapid sequence intubation, or RSI. So what are the kind of things that you think are important in this topic? Well, I mean, there's a fair bit that's important, really, and a fair bit that is different to um, sort of rapid sequence induction and intubation in other areas of medicine. Um, you've certainly got environmental factors, um, uncontrolled or limited control of the scene in many circumstances and obviously a very small team to work with and lack of um, support structures that you'd find in a hospital environment. So that unfamiliar environment can be quite daunting for many people. Um, that's one of the the team the team work is an important area that we focus on in the sessions that we're talking about today. Okay, so so teamwork's uh, is a big factor. So you're you're saying that in the pre-hospital setting that might be more important than it is um, in other settings. And can you give us examples why why that is the case? Yeah, I suppose you can end up in an environment where you've got a team that consists of yourself, uh, the other team member of the retrieval team, plus you can possibly have some paramedics from road ambulance. You may have a local health team response and often you've got non-health people such as jackaroos or passers-by that have turned up at the scene and helped. So coordinating those people to get the best outcome for the patient or patients is really critical and applying your skills to get the best outcome for the patient when you don't have some of the extended range of tools that you're used to in a hospital setting is also a challenge. Okay, so, so the people that, who might be coming to this airway and anaesthesia course uh, for, for pre-hospital uh, care uh, they might come from a range of backgrounds, but um, who do you think uh, would be the, the ideal person that would benefit the most from, from the course and also this session that you're going to teach? I think it will be people that may not have done much pre-hospital airway work. So we may have anaesthetists that are very competent in a theatre environment. We may have... GPs who have done some anaesthetics but not much airway work. So it can target a number of people with various technical competencies beforehand but not as much familiarity with the pre-hospital environment. And it does require a mind shift in that pre-hospital environment because you essentially don't have any local backup in many circumstances. So you need a really robust approach to airway management that gives you as, and the patient as much safety as possible with the limited tools that you can carry. Okay, all right. 
and um, and just uh, in terms of a robust way to, to, to manage the airway and so forth. Uh, I, I guess in your experience, you've, you've you know done a few pre-hospital uh, RSIs, uh, and what have you found to be just just a couple of areas that you found to be very helpful when you've done it uh, for yourself? I think having your plan already clear in your mind and clearly communicated uh, to the rest of the team is definitely an advantage and that comes from review of the literature and discussion amongst colleagues to come up with a plan that is suitable for the pre-hospital environment then having that plan prepared in your head and practised before you find yourself in the actual situation that you require it. Then on the way up to the event you actually get all your equipment further prepared so you'd be drawing up any drugs that you would be planning to use, getting the appropriate sized airway equipment out, uh, talking through the plan with your colleague who should also be familiar with the plan from previous practice ideally in functional teams that we work in. Uh, as far as the equipment and drugs on the ground, I think you need to choose uh, equipment and drugs that you're familiar with, either through previous use or recent practice, and having a system that offers the greatest level of safety for the patient. OK, well, look, that was Dean Taylor. Um, he's uh, an instructor on the STAR program uh, and uh, a faculty instructor with the pre-hospital anaesthesia and airway course that we're running. So uh, check out our website uh, and, uh, you know, consider coming along and hearing more about uh, what he's teaching and talking about, as well as the other instructors on the course. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the recording today and uh, we'll see you later. Thank you.